Over on Jaguar Gator 7, a new baseball video is out. In this video, we talk about some bizarre drama that happened after the 1988 New York Mets won the NL East title. Click the card in the upper right corner to watch. And now, on with our feature presentation. This year, the NFL is going to make history because on November 24th, the NFL is going to have its first ever Black Friday game as Amazon live streams the battle in the AFC East between the New York Jets and the Miami Dolphins. Honestly, it's kind of hard to believe that it took this long for a Black Friday game to occur, seeing as the NFL has been taking over just about every holiday. But part of why that was the case was because of the Sports Broadcasting Act of 1961. In short, this act passed more than 60 years ago prevents the NFL from competing against high school football and college football, and makes it so that the NFL cannot schedule a game on a Friday night during high school football season or on a Saturday night during college football season, which is considered to end the second week of December. If any college football game or high school football game is taking place within a 75 mile radius during that time, then that game cannot be shown on TV because of a completely justified fear that it will hurt the high school and college game and hurt their attendance. Now the NFL is able to get around this on Black Friday by starting the game at three o'clock Eastern, since the act doesn't take effect until six o'clock. So they're completely in the clear. Whether you agree with the Black Friday game is up to you. But legally speaking, the NFL can show the scheme. Because now, I want you to imagine a situation where the NFL just flat out forgets that the Sports Broadcasting Act of 1961 exists, and they schedule that Black Friday game for Friday night, and no one could watch the game because of it, and the NFL didn't move the game or anything like that. It should go without saying, because it's second nature, but the first thing that you should do when creating a schedule is to make sure that it is legal to play the game and to have it be broadcast on television. Because in 1970, for a game between the Cleveland Browns and the Dallas Cowboys, let's just say that was not the case. Not at all. In 1970, the NFL completely dropped the ball by creating a schedule that paid no regard whatsoever to the law. And they screw their fans over, screw the TV networks over, and screw themselves over big time. Because more than half a century later, this is the story behind what has to be, considering the circumstances, and considering the extreme incompetence behind it, the dumbest scheduled game in the history of the NFL. Before I talk about the game in question and what the controversy was, we need some context to understand the importance of the matchup at hand, because this was a pretty big game. It's December 12th, 1970, and you've got an interconference battle between the Dallas Cowboys and the Cleveland Browns. Aside from the fact that these teams were heated rivals, seeing as they played each other in each of the past three playoffs, with the most recent meeting in 1969 being a 38-14 win by the Browns, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner, this was a massive game in terms of the playoff picture. In one corner, you have the Dallas Cowboys. After nine games, including an embarrassing 38-0 loss of Monday Night Football at the hands of the St. Louis Cardinals, they looked dead in the water and essentially needed to run the table to get one of the four playoff spots in the NFC. However, after three straight wins thanks to a sweep against Washington and a home win on Thanksgiving against the Green Bay Packers, they were 8-4, right back in the thick of things. They still didn't have any room for error, seeing as there were seven teams in the NFC with eight wins. But at the very least, if they won this game, they'd be atop the NFC East for the moment. And in the AFC, you had the Cleveland Browns, who were 6-6 six and six following a big win on Monday Night Football against the Houston Oilers, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. Cleveland was tied with the Cincinnati Bengals for the division lead in the AFC Central, which was shocking seeing as the Bengals were 1-6 and, and somehow rattled off five straight wins to go from the worst team in the NFL to a legitimate playoff contender. Both teams needed this game badly. The winner was in prime position to win their division and make it back to the playoffs, while the loser 
would be all but eliminated. It was a big game on national TV, with this being a Saturday game on CBS for the whole country to see. However, this big interconference battle that was a renewal of one of the more heated rivalries of the 1960s was not the only big football game taking place that day. And no, I'm not talking about the game that NBC had later in the day for first place in the AFC West. I'm talking about this game right here. If you don't know what this game is, this is the Pecan Bowl. And in college football, before there was the Division II National Championship and the playoffs, there were four champions based on geographic regions. You have the Boardwalk Bowl in New Jersey to determine the champion of the East, the Grantland Rice Bowl in Louisiana to determine the champion of the Mideast, the Camellia Bowl in California to determine the champion of the West, and he had this game right here, the Pecan Bowl, to determine the champion of the Midwest. This footage, since there is none available from 1970, comes from the 1966 edition of the game between North Dakota and Parsons. And the Pecan Bowl, which took place on the second Saturday of December, took place in the city of Arlington, Texas. Already, you might be able to notice a teeny tiny problem with this. Per the Sports Broadcasting Act of 1961, if a college football game was held up until the second Saturday of December, December 12, 1970, then the NFL could not televise any of their games within a 75-mile radius. In order to encourage people to attend the college football game, and to not cannibalize that level of competition. And how close is Arlington, where this game was being held, to Dallas? Well, seeing as today, the Cowboys literally play their games in Arlington, I think you might be able to guess that it was awfully close. So what does this mean? You guessed it. As things stood, no one in Dallas would be able to watch the Cowboys game. If you wanted to watch the Cowboys game, you either had to physically be at the stadium, which was kind of tough, seeing as the game was in Cleveland, or you had to leave the 75 mile radius and find some motel or bar outside of that radius that was able to show the game. And it would be one thing if the Midwest final was held at the campus of one of the two teams playing in the championship. So there was no real way to determine where this game was being played, and it was just incredibly unlucky. However, this battle was between Arkansas State and Central Missouri State, as in, two teams that don't even play in Texas. This game was not just held at a neutral site in Arlington, but had been in Texas every year since its creation in 1964, and had been in Arlington every year since 1968, on the same exact date. In other words, people knew about this. Nothing about this was surprising. The NFL had one job, which was quite simply to not play a game on that Saturday involving the Dallas Cowboys, because no one in Dallas would be able to see the game. And somehow, they failed. They somehow failed to comply with the law. And to the surprise of no one, people were outraged about this at first. As Brown's owner Art Modell said on this, in a surprisingly racist comment, a Chinese idiot made the schedule. I don't even know who he's referring to, seeing as Pete Rozelle is not Chinese, and the men who helped come up with the schedule were Mark Duncan and Jim Kenzel, neither of whom are Chinese. Regardless, he was furious, as was one official of the Pecan Bowl, who through the NFL's oversight, now found himself in a terrible position. As this official said, we've really gotten some bad mail about this, but it was out of our hands from the beginning. We have no control over a federal law. Our games are scheduled far in advance, and the NFL just overlooked us. So you would think that the NFL, after recognizing this problem, would have done something to make sure that this scheme could be shown in Dallas seeing as this was a pretty big problem. Not only did Commissioner Pete Rozell really want to make sure that away fans got to see their team play, but he went as far as getting the blackout for the Jets-Giants game lifted for that exact reason. Plus, CBS had to be fuming about this, since this was a battle between Cleveland and Dallas, and no one in Cleveland or Dallas would be able to watch the game, 
since the game was blacked out in Cleveland due to NFL rules mandating the blackout of any home games regardless of its ticket status. And the game was blacked out in Dallas due to the Sports Broadcasting Act of 1961. However, the NFL, in an incredible display of incompetence that was entirely of their own doing, threw their hands in the air and said, Oof, uh, that sucks. Man, oh man, uh, I, I wish we known about this. That's a shame. I, I feel terrible. Well, you're all you're wrong. Good luck. Seriously, the NFL's response to this was complete apathy. The Cowboys tried everything in their power to get the game changed. There were three options at hand. Option one was to move this game to a primetime Sunday slot, so you'd have somewhat of a triple header for the first time. I've talked in previous videos about why this idea might not have been the best back then, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. However, this would have given CBS a Sunday night game between two teams that needed this one, as they get a national game at night instead of a national game on a Saturday afternoon. You'd think that this would have worked, since we're near the holiday season, and way more people are likely to be shopping and not buy their TV sets on a Saturday afternoon versus a Sunday night, when the department stores are closed. And especially since CBS was taking a beating on Sunday nights anyways, as they were a distant number three in the ratings behind NBC, which had the wonderful world of Disney at Bonanza, and ABC, which had the FBI and their Sunday night movie. None of CBS's Sunday night shows were inside the top 30 in the ratings, unlike NBC and ABC. However, this never happened. Option two was to try and get a different game on Saturday and see if any team would want to make the switch. You would need to get a marquee game between two teams playing for something, and there was only one game that seemed to be in consideration, which was this game right here, as in the monumental NFC East battle between the St. Louis Cardinals and the New York Giants in St. Louis. This would have been great, because if the game is in St. Louis, you now have the number one media market in the country in New York having a vested interest in this game. Plus, the Cardinals were 8-3-1 at the top of the division, and the Giants were 8 4 The winner of this game would take first place for the moment in the NFC East. However, for this game to become the Saturday afternoon game, the St. Louis Cardinals were needed to approve and need to make the switch. And they wanted no part in helping the Cowboys out and wanted no part in playing on a Saturday. It made complete sense in their eyes as to why, said Vice President Bill Bidwell. I'm sorry, but our fans hate Saturday games. The last time we played on a Saturday, we had 10,000 no-shows. Side note, but that game was in a 27-16 victory in the final week of the season in 1968 against the Cleveland Browns. This might be a case of correlation not equaling causation, because that game meant absolutely nothing, seeing as the Cardinals were mathematically eliminated from the playoffs and the wing shield was zero. I'm not sure it was a case of hating Saturday games so much as it was, we don't want to spend money to watch a game in zero degrees and freeze our butts off in 20 mile per hour winds when our team is eliminated. However, Big Will continue, saying, Our stadium is downtown, and that's the next to last Saturday before Christmas. It would be a madhouse. One time, we had a 3 p.m. Saturday game and almost had a riot. Why? Well, I guess it was the long lunch hour. One guy was leaning against the flagpole rope when the flag went up and he went down, and nobody saw him again until the third quarter. You interpret that however you want to. Bottom line, the cards wanted no part of this. None at all. A Saturday game in their eyes, despite the national exposure that it would bring, would be extremely detrimental to their business and their local fan base. So the Cowboys tried one more option. If they couldn't get the game moved to a different day, then maybe they could fix the problem with money. The Pecan Bowl was a non-profit game, as all the proceeds for that game went to charity, with the proceeds going to the charity of the now outdated name, the National Association for Artwork Children. What if the Cowboys matched the contribution to charity that the bowl was giving to that charity in exchange for the blackout being lifted? 
seems like a pretty reasonable solution to the problem. However, that also didn't work. Maybe part of it had to do with the fact that they were matching the proceeds instead of just outright writing a check for a fixed number, since the concern could be that if the game is televised, no one would go to the Pecan Bowl, meaning that the bowl wouldn't receive a ton of money, and even with the Cowboys matching that, it wouldn't be as much as they would make outright. Maybe the approach was off. Either way, everything failed. The game couldn't be moved to a different day, no one was willing to take their place, and the Pecan Bowl wasn't budging. Nor did they have to. This was the NFL's fault. The NFL infringed on their territory. This act was designed to protect college football and the Pecan Bowl. They were under no obligation to help. The Cowboys tried everything in their power, but the NFL royally screwed up and did nothing whatsoever to help them out. So when the Cowboys won 6-2 in an insanely sloppy affair, not one person of the 1 million people in the Dallas-Fort Worth area could watch it. Good job, NFL! The whole point of the Saturday games was to help out the TV networks and increase eyeballs. And you went ahead and through your own incompetence, did something that was the exact opposite of this. Honestly, I don't think this bad schedule decision can be topped. Sure, there have been some bad scheduling decisions, like putting the Buccaneers on national TV in back-to-back -back weeks in 1990, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner, and scheduling the Broncos last season to play in prime time just about every single week. However, even if those decisions made little to no sense, at least you could argue that we're just saying that because of hindsight. But this, there's no hindsight. You knew this game broke the law, you scheduled it anyway, and then you didn't change it. You scheduled this game for TV purposes, only to screw over TV and prevent Cowboy fans from watching their own team play. Job well done. So when the NFL airs their Black Friday game this season, at least be glad that this time, they knew about the ads and knew their limitations and whatnot. Because half a century ago, in 1970, that was far from the truth. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.